Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about alternative splicing. In this series of lectures, we are talking about uh, different post-transcriptional modification in eukaryotic RNA, be it uh, 5' prime capping, be it 3' prime polyadenylation, be it RNA splicing. We have talked about all of this. We also have talked about RNA editing mechanism. In this particular lecture, we are going to focus on alternative splicing mechanism. What is alternative splicing? Why alternative splicing is very important? And what is the mechanism behind alternative splicing? We are going to see every single details in this particular lecture. So, uh, first of all, what is alternative splicing and why alternative splicing is different from a regular mode of splicing? Okay. I know that, I believe that you have a clear idea about what is splicing and why splicing is important and if you don't have any idea then please watch my lecture on splicing and mechanism of splicing before seeing this particular lecture but still i'm going to give you a simple summary of what splicing is in eukaryotic cell basically what happens if this is a cell this is the nucleus and we know that the mrna need to be transported to the cytoplasm to make proteins in the cytosol but in order to make proteins in the cytosol the mRNA that we need to transfer should carry only coding elements, only coding sequences, right? But in eukaryotes, the mRNA that is produced after transcription in the nucleus contains both coding elements as well as non-coding elements, right? So the coding elements are known as exons and non-coding elements are known as introns. So let's example, let's say that the zigzag uh, structures or patterns are the coding elements or exons and the rest of the patterns are introns. And in reality, in eukaryotes, uh, the pre-mRNA or pre-edited mRNA or premature mRNA, whichever is produced in the nucleus, uh, carry more introns than exons. So what we need to do is basically to cut these exons and join them together. So we need to cut the exons and join together and to make only coding RNA and then transfer it to the cytoplasm. So the process of converting the coding and non-coding stretch of RNA to only coding stretch of the RNA is essentially known as splicing. Now the splicing can be of different types. We have talked about the different types of splicing that includes the uh, uh, self splicing or auto splicing which is seen in uh, archaea in bacteria. But we have also seen uh, the complicated mechanism of spliceosome mediated splicing which is seen in higher eukaryotic organisms. Okay. So now we are going to talk about a different mode of splicing known as alternative splicing because normal splicing is a regular phenomena inside the cell, inside the eukaryotic cell. The splicing is a part of the post-transcriptional mRNA processing and after the post-transcriptional mRNA processing, the stretch of exons are attached together and they are acting as a coding mRNA transported to the cytoplasm. But uh, beyond that idea of uh, beyond that idea of normal splicing, because normal splicing is very essential uh, to cut the introns out. It's very essential. But what about the alternative splicing? Alternative splicing is important because alternative splicing can increase uh, the chance of producing different variety of proteins from a same stretch of mRNA just like the RNA editing. RNA editing was a process where we know we can modify single nucleotides, either replace them or insert a new nucleotide or delete a new nucleotide that results in a different variety of protein synthesis from the same stretch of RNA. Similar thing can be achieved with alternative splicing. But in this case of alternative splicing, there are even more chances of variations where uh, from the same stretch of RNA, let's imagine this is these are the, the squared sections are exons. Let's imagine this is exon 1, this is exon 2, this is exon 3. Uh, so as per the normal rule, we should have uh, RNA produced with this exon 1, exon 2 and exon 3. This is a normal idea, you know, normal splicing where we have exons joined together, introns are cleaved out. So this is normal. This is normal without any abnormality, without any changes. But now with alternative splicing, what happens is that we sometimes can skip exon. For example, due to a mode of alternative splicing, we skip exon number 2. So what we have, we have exon number 1 attached to exon number 3. The exon 2 is skipped. So this is known as skipping exons. So this is abnormal. This is abnormal one and this is a result of alternative splicing. Another example, there can be introns added to the final product of the mRNA. 
Usually, the introns must not be added as a final product of the mRNA. Introns must be cleaved out. But assume that there is some sequence present here in, in this intron that we keep this intron number 1 along with exon 2. So what we have, let's say exon 1, then what we have intron 2, intron 1, then we have exon 2, then we have exon 3. Okay. So this is another example, this is another abnormality, the abnormality type 2 here in this case. What happens here is that we retain this intron 1, we retain intron 1. So this is another result and the protein products that we are going to get from this, let's say protein X, from this, it's a small protein Y and from this protein Z. All the proteins will have different structures, they have different structures so automatically they have different sort of functions in the cell. So basically the alternate splicing can increase the expression profile of the RNA as simple as that. It increases the expression potential of an mRNA. From a single mRNA we can produce and make many copies of proteins, many varieties of proteins. They may have different functions to play in the cell. That is the beauty of alternative splicing. You need to keep this in your mind. That's how alternative splicing is important. That's why it's important. That's how it's important. So now the question is, if you ask me a question like, like alternative splicing, first of all, do it, do it require energy? And second thing, uh, is it common or necessary in every single stages in the eukaryotes? The answer to that is very simple. Yes, they require energy from ATP hydrolysis. The second uh, answer to the question uh, is that uh, in this alternative splicing, they are not always found in every single aspect like the splicing because splicing is something that needs to be done in every single, after every single transcription in the eukaryotic cell to mature the mRNA to be exported out of the nucleus. But alternative splicing is uh, like a trial and error effort that is uh, generally as a gamble played by the cell to see what varieties of protein it can produce. In many occasions, they will end up in proteins which are of no use. Many, in fact, in most of the occasions, they will end up in making proteins which are of no use. So just wastage, they are being degraded by the proteasome complex. But in few occasions, they can give rise to certain proteins. They have completely separate functions to play inside the cell. And that changes the equation. Cells take that risk to generate even tiny possibility of making different variety of protein from a fixed mRNA transcript. So the thing is the transcriptome remains the same, but from there the proteome means the number of proteins at a given time in the cell, the huge amount of variety in the proteome can increase with the help of this alternative splicing technique. Okay, so now I'll move on to the next slide and give you some insight about the alternative splicing and what are the <clears throat> regulatory components of alternative splicing and what are the types of alternative splicing in details. So I'll take a red color here. I'll take a red color for a better visualization of this process here. You can clearly see the alternative splicing, uh, the regulatory elements of the alternative splicing. That's what we're going to see now. So what are the regulatory elements? Remember one thing that when I uh, talked about the alternative splicing, I already told you that what we have here is uh, the introns and exons, right? So we have this exon, let's say this is exon one. And let's say this is exon 2 and this is let's say intron okay so regulatory elements are specific nucleotide sequences that are found either in the introns or in the exons of the premature mrna before the splicing event okay so we have exonic splicing enhancers or ESEs, exonic splicing enhancer short nucleotide sequence within the exons so basically nucleotide sequence that is present in the exons and that promote exon inclusion. So there are two things that can happen during the alternative splicing. One is that the exon can be included in the next splicing round or there are sequences based on the nucleotide structure that known as exon exclusion events. Okay, So these are enhancers then there are splicing silencers. Silencers are such nucleotide sequences. If those sequences are present in the exon, that exon is not considered to be a part of the RNA after the splicing event. Simple as that. So we have two different kind of sequences. 
one stretch of consensus sequence if they are present strong signal that please include this exon in the spliced out event and there are sequences known as silent signals if those signals are present as a nucleotide then that signals not to take that particular exon to the next round so they are based on that we have exon splicing enhancers exon splicing enhancers ESEs that means include that exon it gives a positive reinforcement and then we have exonic splicing silencers that means if this sequence is present then that is a trademark that is the information provided by the exon not to include itself okay similarly it have intronic splice enhancers so for introns we have intronic splice enhancers or ISEs if ISEs are present that is a positive reinforcement to keep that particular uh, structure in uh, the, to keep that particular intron in the final product of the splicing event and introns, uh, intronic splice silencer or intronic splicing silencers are again the presence of particular signals in the introns that make sure that that part of the intron is should not be end up in the final product after splicing very clear I believe we have a clear idea so splicing enhancers are nucleotide sequences provides the information that please include me please include me and uh, the sp uh, splicing suppressor or silencers are nucleotide sequences say that I'm not going to involve in the next round so please do not in uh, include me okay so that's present in both exons as well as both introns equally they are important they are present in both these sites okay so so that's the very important part at this level now let's move to the next slide and see what are the types of uh, alternative splicing so in this particular slide we are going to conclude the understanding of alternative splicing by providing a list of types of alternative splicing that are out there okay so to understand that what i'll do is that i will draw this image where we have exon let's say exon one then we have uh, exon two and let's say this is exon three I'll draw three different exons here, okay? So these are three exons and in the middle we have introns. We have intron 1, we have intron 2, okay? Now what we clearly see is that the first type of splicing is exon skipping. Usually what we need as a result of a splicing is that to join every single exons and cleave out every single introns. That's normal, right? That's normal. So you need to keep both these exons in mind. So normal version should be something like this normal version should carry e1 e2 and e3 all these three together but we are not discussing about normal here what happens in the first case exon skipping is that it skips one exon so it skips let's say exon 2 so instead of making e2 e1 e2 and e3 in a stretch now what we are going to observe a shorter span with only e1 and e3 because e2 is skipped Okay, so E2 is exon number 2 is skipped. So we are end up with truncated, truncated form of RNA, small stretch of RNA. So obviously the protein they are going to produce will be of less length. Then comes intron retention. So generally the intron should not be kept in a splicing event. But in this case, let's say the intron carries an intron splicing enhancer element in it so it has the intron splicing enhancer element so as a result what happened is that we have e1 we have i1 we have e2 and we have e3 so our end product will be something like this which is a bigger form of the actual normal spliced out rna so this particular uh, rna which is lengthier form will generate a different variety of protein a lengthier form of the protein if intron is considered as a codon for the synthesis here okay so that is intron inclusion and that is done due to the presence of intron splicing splicing uh, intron splicing enhancers present in the intron then come alternative splice site alternative 5 prime splice site or alternative 3 prime splice site okay means different 5 prime sites or different 3 prime splice sites can be utilized for example we know that this is 5 prime end and this is 3 prime end okay and uh, i'll tell i'll check a different color at this moment for a better visibility here i'll take blue color so we know that this is a 5 prime so this is where the 5 prime splice site comes in and this is where the 3 prime splice site comes in right now what we can see is that 
during the process of during the process of uh, splicing or uh, the events of splicing we need to attach we need to utilize any one particular 5 prime splice site and 3 prime splice site so different 5 prime splice site or different 3 prime splice sites are used resulting in inclusion of different downstream exons so basically what happens is that the 5 prime and 3 prime splice sites that we should take in order to join the exons to form uh, the proper exon structure proper mature mrna structure are altered in this case okay uh, they are altered so we take a different splice site entirely or took a different 3 prime splice site entirely that will result in for example instead of taking this 3 prime splice site if we take this 3 prime splice site it will result in a different splicing event okay and then we have alternative promoters utilization now this mutually exclusive exons or alternative promoter is something that is related to the structure of the mrna itself because you know the in mrna there are promoter elements right operator elements so the promoter that we should utilize in order to count the initiation of the exons because you know promoter is the part which is recognized as the initiator sequence for the making of mra right so that is a start point anything from the promoter downstream is plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 like this anything upstream minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 like this so from promoter itself all the other components of the rna that we need to uh, see that we need to check is in the downstream downstream side so that promoter is very important now if we change a promoter let's say anything so this is a promoter and anything in the downstream is something that we used as a pre mrna right and this pre mrna is usually taken for the splicing event but if we alter the promoter and we use promoter somewhere downstream instead or a promoter somewhere upstream instead then that will completely change the equation that will change the equation and that will make a totally different version of the mrna and this totally different type of mrna that will produce this particular mrna uh, is involved in the splicing event and the splicing event will no longer be the same the resultant will no longer be the same that is the idea of alternative splicing so alternative splicing is a very common type are the exon skipping intron retention and the change in the 5 prime and 3 prime splice sites but if we change the promoter uh, that will completely change the length of the protein that we are going to produce as a result of translation of the target mrna after splicing so these are all the different type of alternative splicing mechanisms and the types and how they are utilized why they are utilized during the uh, process of splicing and remember why alternative splicing is uh, supported by the cell why cell always want to go with alternative splicing is because the alternative splicing can increase the variety of proteins in the cell at a given point of time from a same stretch of mrna at a given point of time so even though the transcripts remain the same but from the same transcript they are going to produce different varieties of proteins so the proteome that they are going to produce will be huge will be different that's the idea about the alternative splicing okay so that's all about alternative splicing if you understood this process very clearly then please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this <coughs> channel to get more videos like that in future and also watch all the different videos of this particular series uh, starting from the 5 prime capping polyadenylation uh, self splicing splices or mediated splicing alternative splicing and rna editing to understand every bits and pieces of rna biology in details because remember rna biology is a topic of interest for many different phd entrance examinations and they are asking question from this topic even more after the recent years development in rna biology so all the very best thank you bye